Welcome back to the Owners Managers Conference for the TechoBlock Contractor Showcase event. This is part three. We're going to be talking about people care. We're going to wrap up a little bit on sales review and then we're going to get into people care. People care is all about recruiting the best, reviewing those uh, candidates, making sure that we retain them, we retrain them, and that we repeat and keep building and bringing in better team members to our company. So let's start with a conversation on people care. Recruiting means staffing for weakness. We're gonna go through a spreadsheet. It is available on the right side of your screen. You can click on and download it or get it from one, any one of your TechoBlock authorized salespeople. We're gonna talk about selling boldly. This book, part of the culture of books at TechoBlock is available on any one of the bookstore websites or in any of the big box store bookstores. You can go and get it. And this book talks about creating testimonials from existing team members. And there is, on the right side of your screen, a little checklist or questions that you can ask your team on video that will help you recruit new team members. So this is a good one. I would take a couple minutes to look through it. We're also gonna talk about the E-Myth series of books. This one's the Landscape Edition, but it's also available in Revisited and Mastery. And what it talks about in great detail is job descriptions. If you're gonna hire people, they gotta know what your expectations are and you gotta know what your expectations of them are and make sure that they're clear. So this book, among other things, talks in great detail about creating good job descriptions. We're gonna jump over to reviewing, looking at individuals resume, cover letter, and their application and doing an analysis of that. Making sure that we call their referrals and even ask for a few more, get a few more referrals from them. Background and drug test, and then we're gonna to jump to aptitude and attitude test. We wanna know what they know and what's their attitude about overcoming obstacles to success. Now, my favorite book on that subject is Principles by Ray Dalio, another part of the culture books and the book list you see on the right side of the screen. This book, only three chapters. The second two are all about aptitude and attitude test, among some other things, some great information, but making sure that we ask the individuals a certain bank of questions, a test or quiz, to find out what their aptitude and attitude is for whatever role we're trying to fill. So making sure that we're not making gut instinct hiring decisions, but we're doing the analytics that are required. We're gonna round out with the book, Hiring the Best from the Knock 'em Dead series. And this is a great book and you can see all my books have little tabs on them and notes in them and paper clips and writing in them because I digest them, I wanna know what's in there. Part of the culture of books at TechoBlock. And this book will help you through a six step interview process so that you can make sure that everybody in your company, not just you, are involved in that hiring process and that that process takes a certain amount of time. So you can make sure that you're making good decision for the culture of your company and that individual who might be coming to work with you has also made a good decision. We don't want them making bad decisions, either coming to us and then changing their mind three months later and leaving. So this helps both people make a better hiring decision. We're gonna jump from there to retraining. And I say retraining, and that brings to mind this book, Extreme Ownership, by one of the Navy SEALs, Jocko Willink. Uh, and this is a very good book about retraining. Now the Navy SEALs spend a lot of time training to become a Navy SEAL, but they don't stop then. They retrain and retrain and retrain. And we need to be doing the same on our job sites. We need to make sure that there's a continuous training program for everybody from foremen, lead men, laborers, and designers, salespeople, accounting, everybody within our company. And this book highlights that to make sure that we never get complacent and never rest on our laurels. From there, we talk about starting training at zero. It's a common mistake in training, is starting everybody at the same point. We need to do an analysis and find out where they are in their knowledge base and start their training there. When you start at zero and get them up to what they know, a lot of times they lose interest and they get bored and they act out. So let's avoid that. Let's find out where they are and start their training there. NCMA, Vocational Guides, the Techo Spec Guide, and Techo Block's YouTube channel. There are a lot of great resources out there. 
some of these segmental pavement installation vocational skills guides that are available from PaveTech in English and in Spanish. These are great books to help team members refresh and retrain about segmental pavement. When we look at wall installation, look at the Teco spec guide. There are hundreds of pages of, of retaining wall, permeable pavement, step construction. This is not the kind of book that you wanna set on yourself and let it get covered with dust. You should be requesting a new one every about six months because you've just used it up so much and it's almost falling apart in your hands. That's a great sign. Making sure that your estimators and your salespeople are using some of these great books from Vander Coy and Associates. The Vocational Skills Guide, the Complete Business Manual, and Average Wage Rates. These books are great books to help your design team and your estimating team bid jobs more effectively. So very powerful tools. Retaining servant leadership, a recognition culture. What do I mean by that? Here's another one of the books that's on our book list on the right side of your screen. How did you do it? True it, the fastest growing fast food chain in North America, probably the world, Chick-fil-A. And they have a culture of recognition. When they see one of their team members doing something exceptional with a smile, with a my pleasure, whatever it is that they're doing, picking up trash or taking care of someone, when they see that they recognize them with a Be Our Guest card, a free sandwich, a free uh, order of fries or whatever it is they do, and they're constantly doing that and their turnover rate is very low and their dedication of their team, their loyalty of their team is very high. So this helps us do that. Bonuses and how to recover them, a very common question in people care and inspiring, getting lessons from great leaders. We're gonna talk about a book about H. Ross Perot, a billionaire oil man from Texas, but we'll also mention Margaret Thatcher out of England or Ronald Reagan, one of the presidents of the United States, looking at Martin Luther King and what he's done. If you wanna be a great leader, study great leaders. And then how to repeat and start right from the beginning and begin that recruiting process all over again. So once again, thank you on behalf of Tecla Block. I'm Paper Pete, head of the education department. Sit back and enjoy the people care component of the Owners Managers Conference. So let's get into people care. So people care, recruit, review, retain, retrain, and repeat. So what do we mean by people care, Rick? Recruiting number one. So what do we have for them? Show me up on the screen. We just made this new Excel form. I'm gonna bring it up for you guys right now that we call the Strategic Hiring Program. Okay, we're gonna go through this very quickly. The important thing is this Excel document is available to you through any of the men in black or from Rick and myself. Now this document is called the Strategic Hiring Plan or Staffing for Weakness, right? We have touches across the top of the screen. Give me an example of touches, Rick. Uh, could be a phone call maybe, a site visit, uh, could be email, could be social media, could be a letter you write them. That's right. So these are all touches. Who are we going to touch to tell them that we need to hire? Let's start off with local schools. There's not just one local school in your community, obviously. There's probably two or three or four maybe. So don't just go to one, go to several local Who schools. at the school? You could talk to the coach, counselor, administrator, work experience program director, or teachers even. Keep going. Continuation high schools, maybe somebody's getting their life back on track, getting their GED. Vocational right. schools. Keep going. Community colleges. Who would we reach at the community college? Landscape design professor, landscape construction professor, civil engineers, business management professor, accounting, marketing. Wait, wait one second. Business management, accounting, administration. Why would we be hiring for that? Because we're recruiting for weakness. You may be a great technician. You may be great at building things. Maybe you need someone on staff who can do designs or can do marketing or can do accounting for you. And those kids are out there and adults are out there from those schools. Continue. Yep. Universities and colleges. Chamber of Commerce. Great business opportunities there. State Landscape Association. Industry Associations. Right. ICPI, NCMA, NPCA, NALP. NHLA, the Hispanic Landscape Alliance, MCAA. Why would you run ads recruiting on these publications and on these websites, why would you advertise nationally to hire here in the Philadelphia Metropolitan, Baltimore Metropolitan, Wilmington, New Jersey, wherever? Why would you do that? Hmm? Does it make sense? 
as a local, yes, it does, absolutely makes sense. People are always looking to move back home, right? Here's an opportunity for them to see a job. Maybe they're in Arizona and it's too damn hot, right? And they want to get back to this area and now they see a job posting for you. Continue. Different churches, synagogues, mosques, Catholic church, Lutheran, Methodist. They're on every corner. Yeah, you can't drive Stop a couple in. miles to that pastor. Take hands with the churches. minister of the Father. Make sure that they know who you are and that you're hiring good people and that you're a good person. Continue. Past clients, neighbors, friends, your existing team, maybe doing some kind of a finder fee. They bring a buddy in, you get an interview with them, give them $25. They come on board, you get $50. If they stay for a year, you get $100. Maybe. Absolutely. Continue. Juvenile detention programs, work release programs. Let me see that magazine down there. Do you have it in there? Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, yeah. No, maybe not. Yes, it's maybe. No, there is a it's magazine. It's probably in that box down there. Rick's going to look for it. It's a magazine that comes to my house. And the magazine talks about a prison program where uh, vocational training. They train them on all different things, plumbing, electric. And, and I volunteered Techo Block, because I'm that guy, to be involved in that program. And I'm donating literature. I'm donating material, and I'm donating myself, my time, to help those people who are currently incarcerated, nonviolent criminals, who would like to get out and start a new career. Listen, if we're not part of the solution, we're part of the problem. Continue. Local businesses, minority programs, NAACP, APPA, the Asian American Professional Association, LGBTQ, or different women's groups. Yep, absolutely. You should look at this spreadsheet and come up with a strategy to go out and recruit more people. Put me up on the screen. You guys want a copy of this? Let me know. Let Pete know. Let one of the men in black know. We can get you Ab a copy of that. Absolutely. So you should always be recruiting. There is a movie. It's called, what's the movie called? Uh, Glenn, Glenn Gary. Gary, Glenn Ross. And yep. they say, always be closing. closing. I don't believe that one bit. You should always be recruiting. Always be recruiting. If you have the right people in your company, you say, oh, no, no, we're fully staffed. That's not right. You should always be looking for people with a good heart to work within your company. That is very important. Team testimonials. Talk to your team. Ask them what they like about the job. You can use those phrases that they say and use it to advertise to get more people. You can videotape it on your phone. You can put it on social media, the web, the Techo Block Village or traditional campaigns. Take the testimonials from your current team and use them to recruit new members to the team. This is about job descriptions, the E-Myth series of books. You should be taking pictures of these screens, folks, I promise you. This is gold. If you're getting frustrated with your team and you're starting to yell at them because they don't get it and they're not listening, it's probably because they don't understand your expectation. They don't understand what you want from them. So you need to look at the job description you have for all the different people within your company. Make sure they're up to date. Make sure you sat down and explained it to them. Yep, traditional marketing recruiting. Who's seen these signs and gets excited? Now hiring, apply ooh, today. Ooh, amazing people. Ooh, now hiring amazing people. Amazing. I'm an amazing person. Uh -uh. If your traditional ad campaigns aren't working, we need to talk about it, right? The call to action of apply today. No, no, you need to say we work outdoors. We love the outdoors like you do. Do you love nature? Yes, we do too. Come and help us plant things, grow things and build things outdoors. Yep, one of my favorite, digital marketing recruiting. We advertise to get more jobs. Why don't we advertise through social media to get more people working for our company? Like on Pandora. Who's outside and listens to Pandora all day? Different tradespeople. Advertising there gives you an opportunity to reach your target audience. It's funny how we run ads and boost ads to get jobs. When really what we need to be doing is running ads and boosting ads to get great people. Because if you got the right people on the bus, folks, doesn't matter where you're going. You're going to do it profitably. Does that make sense? That is very important. Now, recruiting for weakness, hiring and subcontracting, maybe some of those HR things, maybe safety consultants, or using retired executives who can come in part-time to help you win. This is George Patton, General Patton, and he said, attack weakness. Find out what you're weak at and hire someone to fill that void. It's very simple. Attack weakness weakness. Recruiting to a healthy environment, having healthy snacks for your people like you saw in our trailer, having water, not sugary energy drinks, and stretching. Yeah, who remembers the movie Gung Ho? Who's over 50? <laughs> watch this movie on Netflix or however you watch movies nowadays, I'm not quite sure, but they stretched every day before they started their shift. Now you're thinking that's silly, but Phil Baylor was standing right here Right, and he was talking about palate, 
to pavement. Do you remember that discussion? Pallet to pavement. You're moving approximately 3,200 pounds every time you go pallet to pavement, 3,200 pounds. Think about the last time you stretched before you did that, even just a little. Huh? Never is probably the answer. We need to change our culture. If we're going to recruit people, we need to treat them better with healthy snacks and sick days and mental health days and all those things. Offboarding. If somebody leaves your company, take some time. Sit down with them if they put their notice in and find out why they left your company. Maybe it was them. Maybe it was the foreman. Maybe it was somebody they were working with. And Maybe can, it was you. You can do it online with SurveyMonkey. You don't even have to do it on the phone. You can use SurveyMonkey and create a platform where you send them right, this questionnaire, and you're going to get good data. Here's what I hated about working there. Ooh, that can be tough, but that's the only way to get better. Review, resume and cover letter. I don't care what role it is. They need to have a resume and cover letter. Will it be good? Probably not. That's okay. At least we'll know how well they communicate in writing, and we can help them improve. Make sense? Now, why would we ask for an application, Rick? so we can look at them next to each other. So we look at that resume, we look at that application, and maybe there's some things that don't add up. Maybe Are you saying that sometimes people lie? People lie a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's why we do both. Very important. References called, and all of them called. Maybe even ask for a couple more. Come on, I can't drug test. I'd have nobody on my team. Oh, there'd be nobody to run the company if we drug tested. Let me ask you this. The people you work with, are they your friends? Some of them are your family, am I correct? You're going to put somebody in a skid steer who's under the influence of something with your friends and family around? Of course you're not. It doesn't make any sense. If they can't pass the drug test, they're out, period. That's it. Now, aptitude and attitude test. This is from Ray Dalio's book, Principles. It's only three chapters. Here's the good news. The first chapter sucks. <laughs> Rip it out. <laughs> Throw it away. <laughs> the next two chapters are gold. You're going to love them. I promise you, you're going to love them. He became a multi-billionaire, runs uh, uh, Bridgewater, which is an investment company in Connecticut, multi-trillion dollar investment company, and he talks about aptitude and attitude tests for hiring. He doesn't make gut reactions. He doesn't project an image of who he sees in that role on the candidate. He makes them take three to five tests. And if they score within a certain range, then they're going to work out in that role. And he found out statistically over time that that works. So he never makes a gut reaction on hiring. The bad news about the second two chapters is it's still 600 pages. <laughs> so, but it is very worth it. Six-step interview process. This is what we do at TechoBlock. First call, scripted phone call. Ask them questions. Next is informal. Meet with them maybe for some coffee. Get an idea of their character, what kind of person they are. What's the next one? Next one is formal interview. This is when you sit down and you're a little bit tougher. You get a list of questions. Can you run equipment? Can you build retaining walls? Have you built permeable pavements? Let me ask a question here because this uh, third bullet point says the word confidence. How many people in this room would hire someone who is incompetent? Who would hire someone incompetent? Yeah, I would too. You know why? Because I'm a hell of a teacher, right? And I can help them learn that. Let me ask you another question. Back up one bullet point. Who in this room would hire someone who lacks character? Yeah, me neither. Tiger doesn't change his stripes. If they have bad character, I don't want them in my team. Competence, I can teach. Character, I can't. Continue. Good, bad, and ugly calls. Give them some contact information for a couple members of your team. Talk to them about their job. What do they do every day? What do they like about it? What don't they like about it? Find somebody who is your peer within your company, or maybe your banker, or your attorney, or your accountant, or somebody that you really trust. And in that formal interview number two, have them sit down with you and do the final interview together. And if they look at you and go, what were you thinking? <laughs> this is... This person won't work with your company, then you're probably making a mistake. You don't want to hire that individual. And finally, last is meet the family. Take some time, maybe go out to dinner, grab a bite to eat with their spouse. Let them understand the career that they're getting into. And Absolutely, because be we work late into the evening, we work early, and we sometimes work weekends, and their family needs to be on board. Retrain. Onboarding, clear written plan of what they're going to do when they come on board. 30, 60, 90, and 120 day Those, reviews. The, that, so we can fire them, right? Fire them 30 days later. That's why we do it, right? We want to do a review every 30, 60, 90 days. So if they're not working out, we're going to fire them. 
No, we don't want to fire them. No, we don't want we to. We want to make sure they're learning on schedule. Make sure we're teaching them the correct way. Not everybody learns the same way. Do we agree? I'm a reader. Some people learn on YouTube. Some people want to watch video. Everybody learns a different way. If they're not on track, we can help them. Semi-annual performance reviews, industry certification. This showcase event is a big one, and the Paper Pete Tour, lots of classes. We do a bunch of different classes throughout the year. Go to our website, click events, and that'll tell you different classes we have going on. Who read this book, Extreme Ownership? Jocko Williams. Oh, shame on you. It's awesome. It is an awesome book. Let me ask you a question. When you become, when Jocko Williams became Willick, Willink, Willink, I say Williams, but it's not, Jocko, became a Navy SEAL, it took him... I don't know, a year, 18 months of training and testing to finally get that Trident pin on his uniform. Does that sound right? 18 months, yeah, a year of, of testing and, and grueling. Yeah, you with me? After that time period, he has the Trident pin on his collar. That means he's done training, right? No need. Why are you shaking your head no at me? He's done. He's already an ABC. He's got, Why? Yeah, he's got to keep getting better because somebody's going to call him and push him out of a helicopter into the ocean, make him swim 20 miles to climb a mountain to jump off the other side with a machine gun strapped to his back. So he's constantly training. And you need to be constantly training too. You need to be constantly training your team all the time because it creates autonomy and freedom. And you're going to go to your job and go, oh, wow, everything is happening perfectly. This is awesome. How is everybody doing? Anybody need water? Is everything good? And you'll be able to leave that job. Autonomy, very important. Do an evaluation on what they know. Don't assume that they don't know. You have different levels of people that work for your company. They can't all be trained in the same classes. Where did we get that start with uh, uh, that employee performance evaluation? Where did we get that? On the internet. On the intranet. <laughs> the interweb. You can pull a hundred of them off. Don't start training at zero if they're not at zero. Does that make sense? It is insulting to do that to people. Now, people learn different ways. I recently had my friend Rick rebuild a transfer case to a 1963 Willis CJ5. And I'm telling him that I'm having problems with his transfer case and it's giving me a hard time and I've gotten out of the truck and I need it rebuilt. I can hear him in the background, you know, doing something, right? And we're talking, right? He's doing something. I said, listen, they want $1,500 to rebuild this transfer case. I and mean, what is crazy? What are you talking about? What would you say? I rebuild it. Yeah, he said, I'll rebuild it. What the hell? What, what year were you born? 1981. 81. It's a 63 CJ5. What the hell does he know? How do you know about it? He went on YouTube. He did. And he bought the gears. He put them in and he sealed it up. And it's, it's the only thing on the Jeep that doesn't leak. I just swear to God incredible. That's how he learns, and he applied it and did it. We have Teco Spec Guides. Manuals from PaveTech, English and Spanish, and the NCMA Best Practices Guide for Wall Construction. That's my favorite slide of the whole show, Mr. Hat. Take a picture of this guy. I love this. I love this. I'm the director of education, but I'm trying not to teach anybody. I'm trying to help you learn. Define teaching for me, Rick. What should my students be able to do teaching. with what they learn? What should Te I teach? What should I teach? That's the teacher deciding what it should be important to the audience. Uh-uh, that's garbage. Now I'll explain learning. What should my students be able to do with what they learn? What can what they is do? Operative word. Do. If they can't do, listen, checkbox training can stay in mega corporations. Here's an example of checkbox training. Ready? Rick, do you have system knowledge training? Yes. Check. Rick, do you have product knowledge training? Yes. Yes. How about permeable pavement? Yes. Segmental retaining wall. Yes. Do you know anything about these things? Hell no. Hell no. But we checked all the boxes. He obviously does. You get the point. But simply checking boxes and they can't do it is no good. Do we agree? We got to make sure that they can apply it. Learning is all the time at work, demos, home. There's things that you can do like podcasts and audiobooks, and you can reward people with 50 cents an hour, a dollar an hour raises if they can get through some of these. Setting clear objectives for safety and quality. Language Absolutely. should never be a barrier to learning. We have Spanish installation guides, cross sections in English and in Spanglish, right? which is a combination. Take advantage of these resources that we have for you. We have the people on board, now we have to make sure we keep them on staff. Absolutely, how do we do that? 
uh, by saying thank you, praising them openly if they do a good job, giving your full attention. What did, Pete, I got a little issue. No, I got no, a Rick, Pete, I got Rick, an issue. I'm on social Pete, media. Pete, I'm Rick, gonna, I got a phone I quit, call. I quit. Shut up! I can't talk to you right now. I'm very busy. It happens a lot, doesn't it? Because we're busy and we're business owners and there's a lot going on and social media and we got to check and we got to post and we got to and there's calls coming in and one of our team members wants to share a great idea. Are you listening to understand? When you're talking to your team, you want to keep people, listen, to understand and establish a charity. Right outside this morning, I was sitting by a drop box for Homes for Our Truth. They build mortgage-free homes for double and triple amputees coming back from the war. Please drop a dollar or two into the box on your way out. That is Techo Blocks Charity. We're also partnered with? With Aquascape. They build rainwater systems in Africa, not so people can enjoy them, so they can drink water, so they can stay alive. Yeah, rain harvesting systems, absolutely. Techoblock, in my opinion, and I'm a little bit skewed, I've been here a long time, is the leader in the hardscape industry in North America. I don't think anyone's doing what we're doing, and yet today we showed you all the mistakes we made, right? We showed you humble pie. We showed you when we made a mistake so you could avoid it. That is soulful leadership. That is helping you learn by the mistakes that we made. Servant leadership, encouraging them to think for themselves and try out their own ideas. Absolutely. That's what's important. Their own ideas. Rick, would you shut up? This is the way we do it. What about At if we Faber try this Pete way? What if we Hart try this I'm way? I'm not listening to you. Favor Pete Hardscaping, we do it. I can ignore him once. I can ignore him twice. And the third time, he won't share his ideas with me. And who's going to lose? My entire team, my entire business will lose because I'm not willing to listen to the way he wants to screed the bedding layer or he wants to put in the edge restraint. It might not be the right way, but let's try it. Let's listen to that idea. What's this one? Recognition culture. Anybody ever see The Office where they get the little Dundee Awards every single year at the Christmas party? Who watches The Office? Who owns a TV? Let's start there. Who has a TV? Thank you. <laughs> So what would you do with the Dundee Award, Rick? It's good for recognition. Sometimes it's not all about money. Maybe a senior member sees a younger member getting an award and says, oh, it's so cool. I got four of those at home. It motivates people to work harder. That book, Taking People With You, the author David Novak, runs a small company. The small company is called Yum Brands. Anyone heard of them? What is Yum? Small company, $19 billion or $20 billion. What, what do they do? KFC, Pizza Hut. Taco Bell. Taco Bell, right? They own a little tiny company. And he uses a philosophy called management by walking around. So he goes to the stores and he walks around. And if he sees anybody in administration, any manager yelling at somebody, he will sneak in overnight and put a toy bulldozer on their desk. What do you think he's saying when he puts a bulldozer on somebody's desk? Yeah. I see you smiling and grinning here in the front row. What's he telling them? Stop yelling at people. You're not a bulldozer. You need to listen and help people be better. Does that make sense? If you got a bulldozer on your desk, one of two things is going to happen. You better find a new job or you better stop yelling at people. You follow me? Those are the only two options you have. It's a great book as well. Caring Culture, Chick-fil-A, the fastest growing fast food chain in North America. When you do good things working there, they give you these little cards for free food and whatnot. So what are they doing? Setting high standards, setting high expectations, and they want to achieve them. And if you do a great job, they give you a Be Our Guest card. How do I know this? Because my daughter works at Chick-fil-A. She's 16 years old. She's a little shitbird. <laughs> Anybody know what that is? You've been around a 16-year-old kid? <laughs> That's... Yep, she's awesome though, and she loves it there. And she comes home and she says, "Dad, I got a free sandwich." She got a be. I said, "Oh, that's cool. How'd you get a free sandwich?" She says, "I took my hoodie and I threw it over me, but to protect their food. And I ran out to the car and I put it in the window, and their food got to them without getting any rain on it. I came back in and the manager gave me a sandwich. The next day, she comes home from work and she says, "I got a chocolate milkshake." I'm like, "Well, that's cool. How did you get that?" She says. I just picked up a piece of trash. I had delivered the food to the table. I found some trash. I picked it up, threw it away. Manager caught me right away. Here's a milkshake. Right? Think about that, folks. And think about why Tecklebach gives you $100 gift cards. Everybody gets a $100 gift card for being here to every company because we want to reward high expectations and standards. You're the best of the best. Don't doubt it. You are that. And we reward you with that card. Oh, let me do this one. I'm sorry. 
I'm going to give you a bulldozer. I'm, no, no, I'm not a bulldozer. <laughs> Am I yelling at you? I have these cards. They're sitting up on the podium. And you're welcome to grab one. One side says love, live our values every day. The other side says hate, have attitude towards everyone. This is my 25th or 26th year, something like that in the, in the business. And, and I'm an executive at Techo Block. I travel 200 nights a year. I am rarely home. I'm traveling all over the place. And it's easy to get frustrated. And it's easy to get tired. And it's easy to get short. And it's easy. And then I look up and I see him. And I say, nah, -uh. that's not my value to yell or to be mean or to be shitty ever, right? I live my values every day. I'm a kind man. I'm helping him learn to be better. And all the men in black around the room, that is my charge. And I take it very seriously. So I carry that card in my pocket. And it's a reminder to me not to hate anybody, to love them. And I do. I love you. I love, I love helping him be better every single day of his career, right, and those around me. So if you would like a copy of this card, it's sitting on the podium, you are welcome to one. Different bonuses, daily, weekly, quarterly, however you want to choose. Different gift cards could range from $5 to $25. Figure it out at the beginning of the year. Figure out in your overhead what kind of gift cards you want to give out through the year and give them when people are doing a good That's job. That's right. Go now. Go buy $55 gift cards. Buy $50, $10 gift cards. Buy $2,500 gift cards. Stick them in a lockbox under your seat next to your pistol. Unless you're from New Jersey, <laughs> then don't do that. And when you see somebody on a job site, take an extra second to mulch the root ball on the plants that you removed and to water them before they go home every day. Or see somebody on a job site walk along and really literally pick up some trash, walk over to the trash can and throw it away versus kicking it to the side, go get one of those gift cards and give it to them. Let me ask you this question. Will $10 change anyone's life? No. Will $20 change anyone's life? No. But when you give them that card in front of their peers, they feel recognized. They feel encouraged. They feel, well, they feel inspired. Ross Perot said that inventories can be managed, but people must be led. Led. Inspired. Forget about his run for presidency. This man went from pennies to billions. And he did it in the oil industry, it could have been any industry, because he loved people. He inspired people to bring out the best in them. You want to figure out how to do that? Learn from people like Ross Perot. Learn from people like Ronald Reagan or Winston Churchill or George Washington. There are great leaders out there. Here's just one who understand to win a revolution takes people, not guns and cannons. Yep, uniforms, everybody wearing the same thing. It's good branding for your company. Yeah, good composite toe boots. Team feeling is team doing. Homeowners looking out the window, they want to see a team. Everybody dressed the same, same pants, same shirt, same hat, same hoodie. Everybody looking and acting like a team. People care, wrap, wrap up. If you accept lying on an application without repercussions, that means it's okay. If you bust somebody lying, you have to call them out on it. Absolutely, you have to write them up. Late is never acceptable. 10 minutes up or down from the time that we start, otherwise twice and you're out of here. We never accept it. 10 minutes up or down, okay, life happens, we get it. Other than that, if there's not a good excuse, it happens more than twice, we don't want them. Yep, come to work ready to work. When you show up, make sure you're ready. You have your boots, your attenuators, your tape measure, whatever you need. Don't apply the mafia's creed. <laughs> Punish one, teach a hundred. That's crap, folks. Don't do that. That doesn't make sense. I'm a 50-year-old man. You think people yell at me? My wife doesn't yell at me. My coach at Techo Block doesn't yell at me. People don't yell at me! Because I work hard, and I'm a good man, and I, I set the expectation that they won't. Don't do it. Because they won't learn that way. What do we do afterwards? And then repeat. Keep on doing all of that <laughs> all over, over and over again. and over again. Thank you for again. being here, everybody. Thank you, guys.